as long queues are forming outside petrol stations and garages all over the UK, it will be announced tomorrow that the government will issue 5,000 temporary working visas to heavy goods drivers to, to solve this driver shortage, which is having a knock-on effect and causing fuel shortages uh, because they can't get the fuel to the petrol stations and food shortages and the possible cancellation of Christmas. Oh my God, we're talking about Christmas already and it's only September. But yes, we're worried about Christmas already. Personally, I don't mind if they cancel Christmas. It might be a good thing to have a quiet Christmas for one year, but that's another rant. Uh, so ministers will confirm tomorrow, according to leaked reports, and these leaked reports are not really leaked. They're issued to the press to give them a briefing to start uh, feeding it to the public. And then by the time they announce it tomorrow, the press will have the full briefing in front of them. Because I, I've seen these myself and I've been asked to go on shows. We, we know about these things. Usually they're announced on a Monday, but perhaps because it's an emergency situation, they're going to do it on a Sunday. Um, and they said that 5,000 working visas will be issued to foreign lorry drivers. Uh, this is to help fill the, the job vacancies. It's understood that the scheme will only run for three months, however, and will be capped at 5,000 visas. Now, some will see this as a bit of a, a major U-turn, really, uh, on the government because, you know, we've come out of Europe. We've said, you know, Brexit, we're going to control our borders, borders have, have this long-standing uh, 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 promise to cut immigration down to the tens of thousands from the hundreds of thousands and also um, cutting immigration to boost pay and jobs for British workers, right? Because, you know, we want to look after British workers. So, you know, why bring in all this cheap foreign labour? But now it seems like that's exactly what's going to happen. Although I, I don't like that expression, cheap foreign labour. I, I myself used to recruit nurses and care workers from abroad and they weren't cheap. They, they were just filling job vacancies that were there that frankly British people didn't want to do and they were paid the same amount of money as anybody else. In fact, they'll probably have to entice foreign lorry drivers over here with bonuses and, and golden handshakes, I think, because there is a shortage of drivers in Europe. I, th I believe there's something like 400,000 uh, job vacancies in Europe for, for lorry drivers and there's, there's 100,000 in the UK apparently so 5,000 just is not going to even make a small dent in in that that big problem there um, but it also takes you know weeks and, and even months to, to train drivers there's all these red tape type of courses they have to go through and uh, not just get in their license but then there's these silly red tape courses these health you know these health and safety type of you know, silly courses where they, they pull drivers into a classroom and, and they feed it to them more or less. And uh, I've heard many lorry drivers complain about that. That's going to be a problem because they need 35 hours of that before they can even go out on the road. Um, so let, let's see what, what happens. I, I believe one option, or the only option really, is to solve the immediate problem is to bring in HGV drivers from the army. The army has got, you know, thousands of uh, trained HGV drivers. This is heavy goods vehicle lorry drivers. If I know a guy that was in the Territorial Army, he's 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 got his like we well, let it lapse now, but he had a license. Uh, you could bring those in, and then for those companies like BP, who are partly to blame for causing this, because they were the ones who announced that you know there's there's going to be a shortage if we don't get more drivers. Well, if they can't manage their business and it's an essential service. The government should move in and say, right, we'll put the army in and we'll charge you £1,000 a day or £2,000 a day. We'll invoice you for that for every driver that we put in there, just like an agency would. And I think that would make them you know, pull their socks up pretty quickly. But really, I, I, think that, I, I personally think that's the, the only way that they're going to get in drivers immediately. Because even if they issue these visas, it, it's, it's red tape. You know, you have to, uh, sponsors have to apply to be a sponsor, they have to be... Uh, they have to go through this, jump through these hoops before they can even go out and and uh, and recruit drivers. If they're on the shortage list, they don't have to advertise a job for that long. But um, they, then they have to go and find these drivers. I, I'm sure there's agencies there will, will provide that. Uh, but it could take uh, weeks, if not months, to get that in place. And then do the do the drivers want to come here? Uh, that, that's another story. Um, some people are blaming this on Brexit. I, I I don't think this happened after Brexit. I I think. This happened during the lockdown. I think during the lockdown, when the government uh, forcibly closed you know, tens of thousands of small businesses and kept large businesses open, um, then that's when a, a lot of uh, European workers just went home. Because why would they be sitting here renting a flat or renting a room or a house uh, and paying rent when they're not they're not working when they could just go back home 
to Poland, to Romania, to Bulgaria and say, well, I'll, I'll just go and sit it out until the lockdown's over. Uh, that's when they went home. And, and now perhaps they're reluctant to come back or maybe they need a visa to come back because we're, because of Brexit. But, you know, most European people I know have stayed on after Brexit. You know, bear in mind that they've issued something like five million uh, visas, uh, long term residency permits and, and uh, indefinite leave to remain and, and long term five year residence permits to, to Europeans. So it's not like they've all gone home. But I think during the lockdown, a lot of workers did go home. And that's why there's a million job vacancies in the UK uh, at the moment. Now, trade bodies are panicking uh, about people panic buying. And I, I was out today and there was a long queue outside a couple of stations and people can't get enough petrol. Uh, my local Tesco's were, were closed to drivers, had the cones outside, they were closed. But I saw they were filling up petrol for one of their own delivery van drivers. So their control, you know, they've got the control of the petrol, so they give it to who they want to, but not, not ordinary drivers. But really, in reality, uh, a lot of people are, are getting into fights on, on petrol courts uh, because people are filling up little jerry cans, you know, these petrol cans that you're supposed to use when you break down. Uh, and they're filling those up. So they're, they're, they're filling up their car and then bringing out three cans and filling those up as well, which is, 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 is greedy and it's crazy. And once you start the panic, as, as BP started it, then as much as people say, don't panic, that's when they go out and panic. It's a bit like if you see a child on a bike and they're, they're wobbling along, it's their first ride, and you say, don't fall off, don't fall off. What do they do? They, they, and they fall off. So if you say don't panic, the word panic is the only thing that sticks in their mind, the word panic, and they go out and panic. But is it panicking? They're just going out and filling up their cars. They've got school runs to do. They've got deliveries. Maybe they're, they're, a, they're a cab driver. Maybe they've got a job to get to every day. So they need to fill up their petrol. We've become reliant on cars. We're building towns and cities away from transport now. So people are, are 100% reliant on cars now. So the other thing that's going on in the UK is the shortage of agricultural workers and that the government are also looking at changes to the seasonal agricultural worker scheme. This is the temporary worker visa uh, quota scheme that allows farmers to bring in seasonal workers from overseas. This is long before Brexit and, and even the European Union expansion in, into Europe. They had, they had drivers, they had, sorry, drivers, they had workers coming in from countries like um, Bulgaria, Albania, uh, they come in for six months, they kind of live on the farm and they, they pick crops or whatever it is that they do, processing food, and then they go home. So it's not a, a long term residency visa. Uh, and that's been going for quite a while. They're looking at tweaking that now, I think, uh, because th there is a labour shortage. And, and th these are the jobs that uh, th these have been around for a long time. And they're the jobs that British people just won't do. Uh, they won't go in, into the fruit farms and pick pick stuff and and go to the potato farms and pack potatoes. They just won't do it. And, you know, if you go to places where there's farm farmlands, like in, in uh, uh, up in near Boston in Lincolnshire, where there's loads of farms there, Norfolk, you'll find there's whole villages of people from, from Eastern Europe that have been doing those jobs for, for many, many years. Some on long-term visas, but some on temporary. It's called the SOARS visa. And, and the real issue that, is that countries like the UK have been outsourcing our manufacturing and back office services for years to, to, to countries like, I don't know, China, India, Bangladesh, the Philippines, you know, you name it. And, and we now have a major skill shortage gap. You know, we have to import labour to, to do things even in the building trade sometimes. And, and that's where things have gone wrong. We've got to get back to training workers here and take a long term view and not, not knee jerk reactions all the time and just get, get back to manufacturing our own stuff here so we're not dependent on countries like China. And, and get back to doing stuff and, and, you know, building up a good economy again. That's how China has got, you know, half a, well, maybe you could argue a billion people out of poverty by building a manufacturing base. And, and, and now it's the West that are suffering. It's, it's the America and the Rust Belt uh, states in America that are suffering uh, because of this. And, and here, you know, we've seen manufacturing take a dive. We still do manufacture stuff here, that, let, let, don't get me wrong, but th there is a, a need to do more of that and produce more of our own food, which again, we're totally de dependent on other European countries and, and parts of the world for our food. And we should, should we get back to manufacturing more of that. Now, look at this. The other thing here is that um, there, are, there are a million people unemployed in this country, over a million now since, since the lockdown. 
but there are also five million on some sort of universal credit benefit. Now this could be topping up low wages. This could also be people who are on some sort of sick leave, long-term sick, I've got a bad back, I can't work anymore. You know, five million people are on some sort of benefit here. What is that costing us? Billions, you know? And, and there, there are also, get this, 600,000 people still on a furlough scheme, which is the job retention scheme. This was the scheme that the, the, uh, the government brought in when businesses were forced to close. They said, you're, a non, you're a non-essential business. We're still allowing Tesco's and, and Sainsbury's and the supermarkets to open. They can sell what they like, but you can't, you can't open. You're a restaurant, you can't open. So they, they had this furlough scheme where it was designed to retain jobs. So the company could claim back 80% of the salary of the worker and then the, sal- the worker sits at home watching Netflix for, for a few months. Well, that, that scheme's still going. There's still 600,000 people on that scheme. It is due to end, of, end this month. But why is it still going when the economy here is, is open? I, I don't know many things that are not open fully, apart from maybe mass concerts and, and a few theatres and that sort of But 600,000 people. And we know that there's fraud going on there. We know that some employers are using those people still to do work from home, but using the furlough scheme to, to put in their own pockets. We know that there's fraud on these lockdown loans as well. 20 billion is likely to go missing, it's estimated, by the ONS, the Office for National Statistics. So there's huge problems here. And so, and, and in America, people can get $35,000 a year to stay at home. So why would they go and work in, in Starbucks and McDonald's? No, they're not going to do it. So we've got to get people, wean them off this, these benefit schemes and, you know, get, get, get people back to work, get them trained. If they, if they can't work, they can't find a job in their own occupation, they need to actually get back and be retrained to do the jobs that we need to do here and not just always rely on a quick fix of, of issuing visas to, to overseas workers, because that doesn't work in, in the long run. So there are 500,000 unfilled agricultural job vacancies, but there are a million people unemployed. Well, you do the maths yourself, right? They, there you go. The, the solution is, is quite simple. So we've got to get workers back into the farms. We've got to get drivers in again. Um, now, as this, I want to put another spin on this, because as this crisis grows, and the public starts to panic. Oh my God, what about Christmas? What about our food? We're going to starve to death. I haven't got fuel for my car. There's an ominous so-called saviour in the background. And this is a saviour that will solve all the problem of human labour shortages. And it's conveniently waiting in the wings all of a sudden. That's called AI technology. Now you can call me a, a conspiracy theorist if you want, but if, if, if you want to call someone that tries to read between the lines and look beyond you know, the, the, the news that has pumped out on us and just think, think further than that, then call me what you like. Yes, call me that if you, if you want to. But look, FedEx is running a trial of its driverless trucks between Dallas and Houston, hundreds of miles. Now they're running this trial, big, these big, huge trucks in America with the big, with the big exhaust pipes coming out of there, you know, woo, 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 all this. They're, they're going to be run with driverless uh, technology. But the, for the trial, they're going to, they will have a driver in the cab uh, watching if things go wrong, but they're already trialing this. This is not some fantasy, it's not in the future. And if successful, the company says it could roll out more driverless delivery vehicles running all over America as early as 2023. That's, that's you know, just over a year away. Um, and so this is serious. Three million, there are three million truck drivers employed in America. And I've been saying this for years uh, that this is going to happen. And, you know, there are millions more van drivers, cab drivers, Ubers. Now, Uber has its own plans for getting rid of those pesky human drivers that are taking them to court all over the world, claiming unfair pay and, and you know what. Um, now, they don't need them now because they, they will be replacing those with Uber Uber driver driverless cars. I think they're going to, going to be built by a Volvo or one of those companies. Anyway, this is this is real now. Yes, they've had a few trials. Yes, they've had a few problems. They've had a few crashes, but they'll get over those. They will get over those. And this is one of the reasons why Tesla is so valuable because they have uh, driverless technology already. This is why they're ludicrously overpriced. Their share price is, is crazy. It's, they're worth more than General Motors and Toyota put together. But all the companies are doing this and it won't be long. Look, China already has driverless buses. I mean, we've had driverless trains here for many years on the underground, on the Victoria Line, and, and there are driverless trains in the Docklands. So it's, not, it's nothing new. But for a car to go on the road and navigate through all of the traffic, that's another matter. Uh, but, but China has driverless buses that I've seen on, on videos. 
Uh, there's driverless taxis already. They're not massively rolled out yet, but they've been tested. And Amazon is testing drone deliveries. So you order something within a couple of hours, this drone doo -doo 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 comes down, puts it and they send you a message and you come, oh, look at the lovely drone. I've had a delivery by the drone. Well, that's taken away a job, you know. So it just seems like, are we being fattened up for the kill here? Because all these people who would have, you know, been aboard, you know, horrified by uh, driverless vehicles now say, yes, give us the driverless vehicles so we can have our Christmas. And then at the same time, they're going to wipe out millions of jobs. And could this... You know, could the furlough scheme and the job retention scheme and the and the thirty five thousand a year in America just be uh, a, a sort of a, um, a a test, if you like, or a trial run for an eventual universal basic income or UBI? This is when tens of millions of jobs are replaced by robots. We've had trials of UBI in Finland and Switzerland, so it could be that. And then, you know, what will we be doing sitting at home watching Netflix? And what's happening in the UK at the moment? They're building more TV studios. In, in my local area, they're extending Elstree Studios. They're building two massive new studios, one for Sky and one for another company in, in Hertfordshire. And another part of Hertfordshire in Broxbourne, I think it's the Disney company or one of the, one of the large companies is building another massive studio. So studios are, and why are they building these studios? Because people want more TV. And maybe it's the conspiracy theories of me coming out again, but maybe when they keep us at home on 50% on of our income and they give us lots of nice TV shows so we can keep quiet and, and not go out on the street and demonstrate against lockdowns and things like that. So, so that's my, my end for, for, for this part of it. But really, look, th th there is a new world order coming and, and you've got to wake up to this. Now, other stories I covered this week were China banning all cryptocurrency transactions, declaring them illegal. And uh, this is, I think, because they want to control currencies, as other governments do. And they've already got their own digital currency of their own uh, yuan uh, already. So they don't want uh, cryptos messing up their system, do they? Um, the stock market crash was, was kind of avoided last week when Evergrande uh, came to some sort of arrangement with their creditors. In other words, they haven't paid the interest that the creditors are owned, but they are just too big to bring down. Because if they come down and the creditors don't get their money back, then they will go down with them. In other words, the banks, the bond holders, you know, but apparently they've got um, you know, hundreds of thousands of people who have, have lent the money through their bond issues. There are, um, you know, thousands of, or at least hundreds of banks that are, they're owed money to. There are a million unfinished projects uh, and people that have paid for properties that haven't been built yet. So Evergrande is, is really too big to fail. And I think China will, will probably do something to rescue it I would imagine that some of their ministers are probably in on the act anyway. China doesn't allow a company like Evergrande to grow that big without having uh, some backhanders there. So, so, so watch out for that. And I think what's going to happen is they'll rescue them or do something with them. But I, I also believe that Evergrande are just the tip of the iceberg. Look, if Evergrande go down, that's going to be a major scandal. There'll be people demonstrating on the streets. Where's our money? You know, banks could come down with them. And it could cause a stock market crash around the world. So perhaps for now, they'll, they'll paper up the cracks. But I think there's more Evergrande's back there in China because of this massive property boom. 40% uh, of their GDP, I think, is based on, on property. And, you know, all the money that's been lent on properties, people speculating on properties. So something's going to give there pretty soon. Now, talking about property, half of UK mortgage borrowers are now still in debt after retirement. They haven't managed to pay their mortgage off by retirement. And there is also a, a, a whole wave of new schemes coming out called lifetime mortgages or equity release schemes, which allow people who are retired and have a, a property with no mortgage to, to basically take another mortgage out on their property, which they can then use either to live on because they've run out of money, haven't got enough pension, or they can give to their children and grandchildren to buy their own property. So this generation of wealth that was supposed to cascade down may be stopped because, you know, the, the, the generation coming behind them for the first time in decades are worse off than their parents and grandparents. So now the parents and grandparents having to effectively remortgage their property on a lifetime mortgage, which gets paid off when they die, to give grandchildren and children money to buy their own property. These are called equity release schemes. Take advice if you're thinking of those. But the other problem is that a lot of people are reaching retirement and have still not managed to pay their mortgage off, which, you know, it does point to a, a fall in standards of living if people can't do that. Um, and so, look, 
The other thing here I think we, we're looking at is the lockdowns, all of these things that have happened do point to a new world order. And I think it's time people sort of woke up. Business has changed. And if, if you don't change your business, then you, know, you will decline with the business that, that have declined. In, in the UK, we saw Debenhams disappear. This is a store that's been around for hundreds of years, well, at least over 100 years anyway. Sears in America, I think, closed down their last store. Um, things have changed. Meanwhile, Amazon, are, are, they're, they're, you know, Jeff Bezos is becoming richer every minute, I think. Um, so companies that have adapted and, and adapted to an online trading sort of style, maybe combined with, um, uh, you know, retail and, and high street retailing have, have managed to survive. But there's, there's huge changes coming. Cashless society, digital currencies. You know, what, what next? What have you got to do to, to survive this? And so what can you do to take advantage of this, in fact? And I think the first step to building wealth and turning your finances around is financial education. And this is, this is one of the things I offer. Millionaire habits and, and the habits of the, the wealthy and, and well-off. Um, you know, millionaire now is not what it was. You know, a, lot of, a millionaire wouldn't even buy you a decent house in London being a, being a million pounds. So a millionaire is, being a millionaire is not even enough to really live on in retirement. If you had a million pounds in your pension fund, it would barely give you enough money to live on in retirement. But these habits have been studied and by, by books like Think and Grow Rich, The Science of Getting Rich, and my own book, Yes, Money Can Buy You Happiness. Um, we've, we've looked at the habits of these people and we know exactly what their habits are. They leave success tracks. So if you'd like to know more about investing, managing your money, becoming a professional property investor, for instance, then do look at my free training here, which I'll, I'll put a link up to here. Because, uh, you know, most people spend their lives working hard, struggling with money, because they still don't know how to, to manage their, their money. They don't know the basic secrets of, of just managing money. So despite the fact they've worked a lifetime, despite the fact they've earned a fortune in their lifetime, they can end up broke at retirement or even broke during their lives. So I want to show you how you can immediately improve your financial situation and completely transform your life in 28 days. So watch this training if you want financial freedom, but without necessarily working any harder. If you want to turn your finances around in 28 days or less, and you've always struggled with money, you've, 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 you know, despite working hard, you've always had that money shortages. There's always too much month left at the end of the money. Or you would just like to make more money and make your money work hard for you rather than just having your money or you working hard for your money. This is what the wealthy people do. They make their money work hard for them. The poor people work hard for their money. That's the way it's always been. But it doesn't have to be like that for you. So if you'd like to watch that training, uh, please, please do click on the link below and, and watch my free training that will help you transform your finances immediately. So thanks for listening and have, have a great day. And by the way, thanks for everyone who tunes in on uh, Facebook Live and on, on YouTube. Thanks for all your comments. Please do like. Uh, I can see here uh, Totep. Uh, that, thank you very much uh, for the comment. And, and hi to, to Dagmar there. Uh, great to see you all. And really appreciate your comments and your likes and your shares. And whether you're watching on Facebook, YouTube or other channels or on Tumblr, whatever it is, uh, please do like and share so that this free content can go out to other people and, and also help them. Thanks for listening and have a great day. Bye for now.